John F. Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States, was assassinated on Friday, November 22, 1963, at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time in Dallas, Texas, while riding in a presidential motorcade through Dealey Plaza. Kennedy was in the vehicle with his wife Jacqueline, Texas Governor John Connolly, and Connolly's wife Nellie when he was fatally shot from the nearby Texas School Book Depository by Lee Harvey Oswald, a former U.S. Marine. Governor Connolly was seriously wounded in the attack. The motorcade rushed to Parkland Memorial Hospital, where Kennedy was pronounced dead about 30 minutes after the shooting, Connolly recovered. About 70 minutes after Kennedy and Connolly were shot, Oswald was arrested by the Dallas Police Department and charged under Texas state law with the murders of Kennedy and of J.D. Tippett, a Dallas police officer. At 11.21 a.m. on November 24, 1963, as live television cameras covered Oswald being moved through the basement of Dallas Police Headquarters, he was fatally shot by Dallas nightclub operator Jack Ruby. Like Kennedy, Oswald was also taken to Parkland Memorial Hospital, where he soon died. Ruby was convicted of Oswald's murder, though it was later overturned on appeal, and Ruby died in prison in 1967 while awaiting a new trial. After a 10-month investigation, the Warren Commission concluded that Oswald assassinated Kennedy, that Oswald had acted entirely alone, and that Ruby had acted alone in killing Oswald, Kennedy was the eighth and most recent U.S. president to die in office, and the fourth following Lincoln, Garfield, and McKinley to be assassinated. Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson automatically became president upon Kennedy's death. In its 1979 report, the United States House Select Committee on Assassinations HSCA agreed with the Warren Commission that Oswald's three rifle shots caused the injuries that Kennedy and Connolly sustained. After analysis of a Dictabelt audio recording the HSCA concluded that Kennedy was likely assassinated as a result of a conspiracy. The committee could not identify a second gunman or group involved in the possible conspiracy. Although the HSCA concluded that analysis pointed to the existence of an additional gunshot and a high probability that two gunmen fired at the president. The U.S. Justice Department concluded active investigations and stated that no persuasive evidence can be identified to support the theory of a conspiracy. In the assassination, however, Kennedy's assassination is still the subject of widespread debate and has spawned numerous conspiracy theories and alternative scenarios. Polls conducted from 1966 to 2004 found that up to 80% of Americans suspected that there was a plot or cover-up. The assassination was the first of four major assassinations of the 1960s in the United States, coming two years. Before the assassination of Malcolm X in 1965, and five years before the assassinations of Martin Luther King Jr. and Robert F. Kennedy in 1968. Kennedy traveled to Texas to smooth over frictions in the Democratic Party between liberals Ralph Yabra, Don Yabra, and conservative Texas Governor John Connolly. The visit was first agreed upon by Kennedy, Texas native Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson, and Connolly during a meeting in El Paso in June. Kennedy had three basic goals in mind. To help raise more Democratic Party presidential campaign fund contributions. To begin his quest for re-election in November 1964, and to help make political amends among several leading Texas Democratic Party members who appeared to be fighting amongst themselves. The trip was announced in September 1963. The motorcade route was finalized on November 18th and announced soon after. After the Dallas police arrested Oswald and collected physical evidence at the crime scenes, 
they held Oswald at their headquarters, questioning him all afternoon about the shootings of Kennedy and Tippett. They intermittently questioned him for approximately 12 hours between 2.30 p.m. on November 22nd and 11 a.m. on November 24th. Throughout, Oswald denied any involvement with either shooting. Captain J.W. Fritz of the Homicide and Robbery Bureau did most of the questioning. He kept only rudimentary notes. Days later, he wrote a report of the interrogation from notes he made afterwards. There were no stenographic or tape recordings. Representatives of other law enforcement agencies were also present, including the FBI and the Secret Service, and occasionally participated in the questioning. Several of the FBI agents who were present wrote contemporaneous reports of the interrogation. On the evening of the assassination, Dallas police performed paraffin tests on Oswald's hands and right cheek in an effort to establish whether or not he had recently fired a weapon. The results were positive for the hands and negative for the right cheek. Such tests were unreliable, and the Warren Commission did not rely on these results. Oswald provided little information during his questioning. When confronted with evidence that he could not explain, he resorted to statements that were found to be false.